Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, October 24, 2021. Our fall quarter study is Celebrating God. We're continuing in Unit 2, called to Praise God. This is Lesson Number 4 in Unit 2. The lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is The Joy of Worship. In the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults, the lesson title is Our House. Our devotional reading, 2 Chronicles, chapter 29, verses 25 through 30. 2 Chronicles, chapter 29, verses 25 through 30. Our background scripture, Psalms 84. Our print passages, Psalm 84, verses 1 through 12. Our key verse is the fourth verse of the 84th Psalm. From the NIV Bible, it reads, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your holy word. Please open up our understanding so that we may be willing to share the joy that you have given us as we commit our minds, bodies, and soul to the study of your word. And then let us practice in our daily lives your teachings. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. This is lesson number four in unit two, and we focus on the joy of worship. The Bible Dictionary says that joy is a positive attitude or pleasant emotion or delight. The joy that the people of God should have is holy and pure. This joy rises above circumstances and focuses on the very character of God. This kind of joy is distinct from mere happiness. Joy like this is possible even in the midst of sorrow. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So get your Sunday school book, your Bible, your pen and notepad, and follow along as we go forward with this lesson. Let's get started. There are very few historical indicators that aid in establishing a firm date and time period for this particular psalm. Psalm 84 was likely written prior to the time of the Babylonian exile. Here there is a longing for the house of the Lord and joy that comes from worship. The reference to the early rains would indicate that this was likely the time of the Feast of Tabernacles, one of the three required feast days, and we'll find that in Exodus 34, verses 22 and 23. From the NIV Bible it reads, And you shall observe the Feast of Weeks, of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end. Three times a year, all your men shall appear before the Lord, the Lord God of Israel. It is suggested that this psalm reflects a period when worship at the temple in Jerusalem was observed according to the law, which would suggest the time of the reign of King Hezekiah. There are three questions to consider in this lesson. Number one, what did the psalmist have a strong desire and longing to do? Question number two, who are the blessed men and women as described by the psalmist? And question number three, what does the psalmist have to say about God's covering and protection to those who long to be in his presence? Let's take a look at the lesson's biblical context. This lesson and all the lessons in this unit are in the book of Psalms. The Psalms are a collection of ancient Hebrew worship and poetic writings that contains songs, laments, words of praise, adoration, and prayers. The Psalms have been a source of help, hope, inspiration, and comfort in times of trial and distress, not only in ages past, but in ages present, and they will be here for ages to come. 
There's something about the book of Psalms that you can find whatever you need for consolation, comfort, and peace to your soul. The words of this psalm are the melodic reflections of someone who loved the temple, craved every opportunity to be within its precincts, and rejoiced in the experience whenever an occasion arose to visit Jerusalem. This is how I feel each Sunday as I anticipate entering the sacred sanctuary of the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. How do you feel each Sunday when you go to the church of your choice? How do you feel, Pleasant parishioners, as you make preparation or anticipate the upcoming Sunday worship service? How do you feel about it? Are you longing to see your brothers and sisters? Are you longing to feel the presence of God in the sanctuary? Psalms 84 would have been one of the special musical psalms sung during the pilgrimage to Jerusalem, or just as the people began their descent into the holy city. The psalm was probably written while the sons of Korah were in Jerusalem attending the Feast of the Tabernacles. The psalm soars to the height of jubilation as Israel remembered the turbulent and difficult days in the wilderness. You know, when we look where God has brought us from, sometimes we can sing that song, look where he brought me from, and the more you sing it, the happier you get. Well, that's the way it was with these sons of Korah. Uh, Over time, though, the Feast of the Tabernacles became more elaborate and more ceremonial, more pomp and circumstance, if you will. In fact, it was one of the annual feasts attended by Jesus. You'll see that in John chapter 7, verse number 2. It was during the Feast of Tabernacles that Jesus declared himself to be the water of life and that anyone who came to him would never thirst again. John 7, verses 37 and 38 reads like this. Jesus said, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Let's dive into the study of the lesson. This week's lesson's aims are, as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. One, discover why the psalmist expresses joy in worship. Two, Feel the joy of worship by proclaiming the living presence of God throughout creation. And three, create a visual or auditory expression of how they appreciate worshiping God. There are three lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is, Blessed to worship in the house of the Lord. Psalms 84 verses 1 through 4. The second outline is blessed to worship in the power of the Lord. Psalms 84 verses 5 through 8. And the third outline is blessed to worship in the presence of the Lord. Psalms 84 verses 9 through 12. Outline number one, blessed to worship in the house of the Lord. Psalms 84 verses one through four from the NIV Bible reads, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Key point number one. The psalm opens by declaring the blessedness of the sanctuary in verse one. The psalmist found great delight in the house of God. He loved the Lord with all of his might, soul, and heart. It is the spiritual atmosphere of the place where God's presence abides that endears the psalmist to the sanctuary. The psalmist longed to be in the presence of the Lord. 
You might compare it to that warm, fuzzy feeling of returning home to visit family members after a long absence. We know that we can meet God anywhere at any time, but the sanctuary of God is so precious to the writer. How precious is God's sanctuary to you, Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Faith Family? Or maybe you're not a member of Pleasant Green, but if you're on this call and you are a visitor and you're listening to this lesson, how precious is God's sanctuary of the church of your choice? The psalmist longed to be near the altar of God, the place where humanity and divinity meet. That's powerful. In God's presence, there is joy. In God's presence, there is peace. In God's presence, there is comfort. In God's peace, there is solace. We just feel better when we're in the presence of the Lord. I get so much joy in the presence of the Lord. Key point number two. It is a joy to be in the fellowship with our brothers and sisters when we gather in the sanctuary. Verse 3 is a further expansion of the openness of the temple complex. God's house is so welcoming that even the sparrow can find shelter and safety near the Lord's altar to feed and nest her young. Everybody is welcome to the house of God. Regardless of your walk of life, if you want to come to the house of God, come on in. There's plenty of good room in the Lord's house. Come on in the house of the Lord. Verse number four concludes with a blessing. Who are the ones who are blessed? Those who dwell in the house of the Lord are blessed. They continuously praise and glorify his name. When you read the Psalms, you'll often see the word Selah. And that means for you to pause, take a breath. We don't verbalize it. We just do it. The church building is the place where believers gather to hear the word of God and learn the principles of faith. And we'll see that in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25, and it reads thusly, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So what we want to do is encourage each other to come out to church, get up, put our clothes on, go out and give God some praise, worshiping with our brothers and sisters because we get strength from each other's testimonies and it's just good to be in the house of the Lord. The, where the Lord is, there is liberty. Local church settings really are the incubators of spiritual growth and spiritual awakening, and they matter to the believers. Like the psalmist, we long to be in the physical presence of the Lord. Outline number two, blessed to worship in the power of the Lord. Psalms 84 verses 5 through 8, and it reads, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go forth from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Key point number one. Verses 5 through 8 describe the journey of the traveler to Jerusalem for worship. Blessed means to be happy. Who are those who are blessed? They are the ones whose strength comes from the Lord. Are you happy when Sunday comes? Are you excited just knowing that you're going to fellowship with other believers, whether it's on a Zoom call, a conference call, live on Facebook, teams or in person in the sanctuary? There was the prevailing belief that God's eyes were always on Jerusalem and that he would protect the city just as he protects you and me today. Those that live away from Jerusalem were equally kept and strengthened by the Lord. Remember, all of our help comes from the Lord. So whether we're in the sanctuary or out of the sanctuary, whether we're close to the church or live far away, 
if we love God and if we trust God, he is a protector and a defender of his children. Key point number two, the most likely meaning of verse six is that it serves as a metaphor for pain and struggle. As the pilgrims came closer to Zion, their strength was being renewed and they moved from strength to strength. The psalmist prayed that the Lord would hear him. His prayer was to be physically present in the house of the Lord, to be empowered and strengthened against the challenges, and finally to experience spiritual refreshing. There is power in the presence of the Lord. The power of God is so mighty and gives us such strength and such physical endurance that we are empowered uh, to face the challenges and jump over the hurdles in life as we go forth. We move from strength to strength in the power and the will of God's might. Outline number three, blessed to worship in the presence of the Lord. We'll find that in Psalms 84 verses 9 through 12. And it reads, look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk in for those who walk is blameless. The Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Key point number one, this psalm is credited to the Korites, a family of temple musicians descended from Levi, a son of Jacob. Korah is the ancestor of these musicians. Just, I want to stick a pen right here and say, church musicians who play skillfully, who are faithful to the ministry of music, they are a blessing to the church and they are a blessing to God. Be faithful and remain faithful to God, and God will bless you. Serving him as musicians in the temple, this was their job, and they loved it so much. And this particular Korite wanted, he longed to be in the temple again. I don't know about you, but when we were not in the sanctuary, I had a longing to be a part. My desire was to meet again in the sanctuary. Let's look at key point number two. Verse number nine concludes the psalmist's prayer, which he began in verse eight. Here in verse nine, he asked God for God's favor, which would provide divine protection. In verse 10, he emphasizes the sacredness of being in God's house by saying, just one day, in the Lord's house is more valuable than a thousand days living in the tents of the wicked. I couldn't think of a better place I would want to be. There is no better place on this earth for me to go than to the house of, our, of the Lord. In verses 11 and 12, the psalm ends with the declaration of the Lord as protector and provider. The Lord is a sun and shield. He gives light and protection. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Jesus was the fulfillment of the Messianic hope, for he was and is the true light that has come into the world. And because we are his disciples, he said in Matthew 5, 14, that we are the light of the world, like a city on a mountain, glowing in the night for all to see. Yeah, we got to let our light shine so that everyone can see our good deeds and in turn praise our heavenly father. The Lord does not withhold good things from his people who walk uprightly. Jesus said, when we make the kingdom of God a priority, he adds what we need. And you'll find that in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 and Philippians 4 and 19. Verse number 12 tells us, who is blessed? It is those who trust in the Lord Almighty. The Lord is our shield and buckler who protects and defends his people. There are times when the pressures of life are a heavy burden to carry. Where can people go to find relief from the pressures of life and enjoy a period of celebration? 
How does one gain this deep sense of confident trust in the Lord? The psalmist has shown us that worship in the sacred place is what encourages and builds up the saints. We look forward to a uniquely joyful experience when we worship in the temple. Yes, I can play the piano here at the house and sing and enjoy sending up praises to God alone, but it is nothing like being in the temple, in the church, and having that unique, joyful experience with my brothers and sisters that we share each Sunday morning. We need to encourage and build each other up, and we do that when we come into corporate worship. In summary, as we reflect on this lesson, we're reminded that the believer is always going to be blessed when he or she comes to the house of the Lord with open expectation of meeting his presence. We are blessed to be in the company of other believers who share our faith and hopes that the Lord will be our light and salvation. Trusting in the Lord is our lasting hope in this world. Pastor Shirley Caesar said it this way, This joy that I have, the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. But I like the way the late great brother Lee Williams and the spiritual QCs of Tupelo, Mississippi said it best in the song, Steal My Joy. They say, I refuse. I won't let nobody Steal my joy. I'm right in there with your QCs. I refuse. I won't let nobody steal my joy. Brothers and sisters, there are going to be sunshiny days. There are going to be rainy days, heartaches and pains. But we must not allow circumstances of life to cause us to lose our joy. I don't care what comes and what goes. We cannot allow it to steal our joy. Although the pandemic caused the doors of the sanctuary to be closed for over a year, our hearts and minds continued to recall the blessings and the joy that only God can give. While some are not yet back in the sanctuary, we remember the joy of coming together, gathered in his name to worship him. We forget about the outside corrosion that's going on, all the confusion outside, all the corruptness going on outside. But when we come together, we gather together in the sanctuary to worship and give God praise. Give him glory for the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Well, that's our lesson for today, my brothers and sisters. I hope you got a thought. And remember, don't let nobody... I mean, nobody steal your joy. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this lesson on the joy of worship in your house of prayer. Thank you for the fellowship of brothers and sisters, for the preaching and teaching of your word by our pastors. We pray that our churches will be opened back the way we used to be so that we can come in with the joy and be loud with our praise, joyful and loud with our praise, with the hallelujah in our hearts and on our lips. Let the love of Christ flow among us as we let our light shine, as we worship you in the beauty of holiness. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.